Hey everybody, John here. Welcome to another episode of Itchy Mysteries. Thank you so much for joining me here. Um, this week, a year ago, is the tragedy that happened in Delphi, Indiana with uh, Liberty German and Abigail Williams. And they have certainly been on my mind a lot this week. And when I went looking for an itchy mystery, uh, you know, I keep a list of suggestions that you guys have sent in on top of ones that I've found. Um, I watched a trailer for a, a film called Confluence, and it was made in 2011. That's the one that we're talking about today. And I couldn't help after I saw the trailer being drawn to it because of the Delphi case. Um, it seemed to me like the story that's happening in Confluence has some interesting similarities. It happened a, a lot earlier, but I was hoping that there was something that I could learn from it that would just kind of make me feel a little bit better about the Delphi case. Unfortunately, it might have made me feel a little bit worse, and let's talk about why. Uh, let's start with the plot summary at IMDb, and it's kind of a long plot summary that isn't exactly um, to the point, so I've cut it down a little bit here. The Lewiston-Clarkston Valley has a rich history. However, that valley also has a much darker past, one that many know about, but few publicly acknowledge. From 1979 to 1982, five people disappeared. Only three of the bodies have ever been found. And just to kind of pay proper respect to these cases as well as the Delphi case as we're talking about it, I did just want to mention the names of the girls. Um, one was 12-year-old uh, Christina Lee White. She disappeared on April 28th of 1979. Uh, then Kristen David was 22 years old. Uh, she was last seen on June 26th of 1981. Um, there is 21-year-old Christina Nelson uh, and her stepsister, uh, Jacqueline, who was only 18 years old. And it was on the evening of September 12th, 1982, that they disappeared. Uh, on top of all that, there is one man in the mix here, and that is Stephen Pearsall. Um, he disappeared at the same time as the last two girls. He was actually at a theater that the last two girls were also at, like a community theater. Uh, so there's some question here in terms of the mystery. Is he possibly involved or is he really victim number five? Now, um, the film is only about 55 minutes long, if I remember correctly. And I have to say, uh, in terms of the cinematography... Really beautiful cinematography. I really like the way they show you the location. Um, they kind of have this one shot that is looking down into the valley and they light up um, little text boxes that have the names of each of the towns that are, uh, you know, in, in this valley. And it's good that they do that because there's a very interesting development here, which thankfully we don't have going on really in the Delphi case. But you've got several different jurisdictions here with different police departments. And, you know, I've, I've bumped into some information about situations like this before. Um, they can be very territorial and they don't always share information great. And that does affect this case a little bit. Where this film really shines for me is it is looking at this tragedy, these tragedies, through the eyes of family and friends. There is a lot of interviews with family and friends about what they were going through, what they're still going through to this day. And I don't want to blow it for you, but at the very end, there is a really interesting question uh, about closure that the film kind of leaves you with. And it's, it's just really handled very well. Um, things that didn't work great for me, for some reason... The music in this film pulled me out twice. Uh, at one point, I was watching it, and I was like, why am I getting the feeling that I'm watching a trailer? And then I realized it was the music. And it was just – it wasn't that the music was inappropriate. It just – the tempo and the pace of it didn't match – the information that I was absorbing from the film. And then it kind of happened again with another piece of music as well. Uh, and unfortunately, the levels on the music were just a little bit too loud to where they were kind of 
stepping on the dialogue just a little bit. Not that you can't make out what the people are saying, but it was just a little too loud. It was enough to kind of pull my attention and make me wonder about the music, which isn't isn't a great thing typically. Um, but as I mentioned, cinematography, really well done. The people are really the story here. Now, what about the aspect of it not making me feel better about Delphi? Well, like I said, I was really looking at this saying, is there something in this previous experience that we can learn from? And unfortunately, if there's anything that we learn, it's that some of these cases don't get solved even when authorities have um, pretty much a suspect, but definitely a person of interest. Sometimes the information just does not fall into the right laps or in the right way for them to be able to take that next step and really act upon it. Now, with these particular disappearances, and several of these turn into murders, because um, as mentioned, three of these bodies are found. Um, this is before DNA labs were you know, all over the place. This is before those types of investigations were being handled in that way. Uh, now, it's been long enough, and this film does touch a little bit on the fact that they are trying to get more information using modern methods, but it doesn't really go into what that information is turning out. Um, I can tell you that I looked into this case a little bit after the fact just to see if there were any developments, particularly around their person of interest, and there really haven't been. And you're now looking back, I mean, we're looking back at almost 40 years ago, um, when these events at least started in this area. So it was weird because looking and trying to compare this to Delphi, I hope that we're not on the same path there. I hope that there is enough information that is going to give us some type of breakthrough with the Delphi case. I truly, of all the mysteries that I've covered on this channel, uh, that one is in my top three for I hope that there is a major break in this case that happens soon. Uh, as you've heard me talk about on, on videos before, I wonder about that sketch. I wonder if that is the right person that's been described to those authorities or if it's just someone else that happened to be in the park at that time. Um, but back to Confluence, is it worth your time? Uh, I think so. I think if nothing else, it will give you a very strong dose of what the families are going through in cases similar to this, where we have young women that are uh, disappearing or winding up uh, murdered. Um, it's not the easiest ride because of that subject matter. Uh, there are a few interviews in particular that really tug at your heartstrings. There are people that are just extremely hurt by all this and kind of being stuck in that position of not knowing uh, what happened to their loved one and not knowing if justice is ever going to show up. Um, and then there's this really interesting thing where in this film, they kind of name that person of interest. Uh, I'm not going to do it here. I really want you to check it out for yourself. But in, in one way, because they haven't been able to really bring him in, I'm even wondering if that's the best you know, thing to happen in this where his name is kind of being kicked out there publicly. And I'm looking at certain blogs and finding previous addresses for him. And, you know, we're now talking about a guy that is nearing 70 or possibly already in his 70s. Um, I guess if he really did do this, then maybe he deserves that. But unfortunately, with the information that we're getting from the authorities in this case, we don't know if he really did this or not. So, um, if anything, I wish that this film had more information from the authorities about what their beliefs are. I mean, look at the age of this case. If you can't bust this guy, at least start getting some details out there that might shake up some tips on this case. But it looks like that, that that's just not the way they're going about it. Um, but outside of that, it was really a touching piece. And I think just in honor of it being a year from the Delphi murders. If you're interested in that case at all, I think there are some similarities, at least on an emotional landscape that you will find uh, with Confluence that will give you a bit more insight and a better understanding of what the families are going through of those two young girls. So I think you might want to check it out. Um, on a scale of one to 10 for me, I'd give this about a 6.5. Um, 
you know, I, I wish it was a little, uh, had a little more information from the authorities. I wish the music was a little bit better. Um, I wish that there might have been, like, they could have hired a private investigator and kind of had them dig into this a little bit. It seems like there are some opportunities that weren't taken by the filmmakers. Quite honestly, I had this feeling at, by the end of the film that I felt like they were a little bit inexperienced, particular with this type of subject matter. But I have to respect what they were trying to do. I have to respect the access that they did get to certain family members. They got some very good interviews with them. Um, and that's really what it boils down to. The story here is the strong point. Uh, the film elements kind of come secondary. So have you seen it before? Are you going to check it out? Let's talk about it in the comments below. And thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Itchy Mysteries. I'll see you here on the Lord and Arts channel again tomorrow with a brand new brain scratch. Take care, everyone. I'll see you there.